One of the things I love most about making TypeScript videos is the comments that I get on the video showing other ways that I could have solved particular problems in TypeScript. However, there is one technique that a lot of people seem to reach for pretty often that I try to avoid as much as possible. I'm going to say never probably in the title of this video, which is a little bit clickbaity, but believe me when I say I will spend a long time trying to figure out how to solve the problem without using the as keyword to do an explicit type assertion. That's what we're going to talk about in this video today today, why I prefer not to use it and some ways to work around it. So let's start with this simple example. We've got a member type here, which is pretty small. We have a greet member function that takes a member and we have a members array. And then we're just doing a simple members.find. So we're trying to find the item in this array, which has an ID of one. Member here is either member or undefined because find may not actually find an element in the array that matches our predicate. And so of course we can't pass member or undefined to our greet member function because it expects just a member. Now we had a problem similar to this a couple of weeks ago in a video, and there were two other solutions that people recommended in the comments. The idea here is that let's say for some reason, maybe due to other business logic in our application, we know for sure that there is uh, a member with an ID of one in this members array. Well, then there are two things we could do here. We could use the as keyword to explicitly assert that this is a member. And of course that will work. We're basically overwriting TypeScript's understanding of the system and saying, we know better, here is the type you should use. Another similar approach in this case would be to use a non-null assertion. So if we use an exclamation point at the end here, this is basically saying, if member here resulted in a union of types and any of those were either null or undefined, just filter out those. This is non-null. We know this will actually have some kind of value. And so in this case, it's the same thing as using as because our original, if we remove that, our original union here was member or undefined. Now, both of these are type assertions that I generally try and avoid. A quick side note about the term type assertion here. You may see other places refer to this as type casting, where using as member here casts our value to the member type. Casting usually refers to runtime behavior, where you're actually converting a value from one type to another. But in TypeScript, we don't have any runtime behavior. It's JavaScript in runtime. TypeScript is only in compile time. And so at compile time, we are asserting what we expect this value to be at runtime, but we can only assert in TypeScript. We can't actually cast because TypeScript really just describes the values that we have. It doesn't actually change them in any way. So with that out of the way, let me say that in this case, either asserting with as or asserting with our non-null assertion like this, both of these work, but they're not things that I would use in production. The mental model I like to use here is I think about my TypeScript code as a series of premises. Each of these declarations, of course, is a premise about how I expect these particular functions or variables to work. Greet members, takes a member, members itself is an array of member elements. And then also we have this find premise, if you will, or a declaration of how this find function works. We know that the array find function can find something, but it may not find something if nothing matches the predicate we give it. And so what TypeScript tells us when we combine all of these premises together is that the member I'm looking for might not be in this array. And so I can't just pass that variable directly to my function. Now you might say, well, what if I, as the developer of this code, know that this item is going to be in the list? I reject the question. If you've been a developer for any length of time at all, you know that 100% certainty about how your code works is not something that you can have. And so TypeScript here is telling us there's a case that you're not planning for. By making the TypeScript compiler happy, we actually will have safer code because we're going to handle a case that this code right now doesn't handle. There's a great talk by Michael Feathers called Unconditional Code. I'll have a link to it down in the description. And in there, he talks about finding these types of error cases and making them part of your business logic so that they are no longer unexpected, but that you actually define the behavior of what your application should do if these types of edge cases come up. In our situation here, the edge case is that member doesn't actually exist. So how do we get around this problem? Well, there are a bunch of different things we could do. If this was inside of a function, we could do something like this, where if no member is found, maybe we can just return because we don't want to greet the member. Or maybe the correct behavior is if we can't find the member, then just use the first member in the list. Of course, there may not be any members in the list at all, and maybe we need a separate check for that elsewhere. But I think you get the idea. It's going to be very dependent on your business logic and your situation. Another common thing to do in a case like this is to throw an error. And I'm not going to get into the details of like how to throw good errors and how to do error handling in your application, but here's a simple utility that you might find pretty useful. This is called find or throw. It takes an array of T and a predicate that operates on T, and then you could also pass an error message. And then if we find T, we're going to return it. But if we don't find T, we throw an error. And so now maybe instead of members.find, 
I can do find or throw and I can pass members as the first argument here. And now we can see that this works because we know find or throw is always going to return a member. If you find yourself reaching for the as keyword or for a non-null assertion to solve this type of problem, it may be an indication that you're glossing over a potential error case that you really should be handling instead. Now, there are ways that we can do type assertions in TypeScript in a safer way. Here are two examples of type assertion functions in TypeScript. This first one is called is member. Second one is called is not null. And they both demonstrate different ways of solving the same problem. The core shape of these type assertion functions is that they take some argument, usually of a broader type than the one that they're looking for. And their return type is this kind of special TypeScript syntax arg, where arg here references the argument in our function. So arg is member, and in this case member, in this case t, it's just some usually narrower type than what the argument itself is. So in this case, we're going from unknown, which is just the broadest possible type in TypeScript, and we're gonna narrow it all the way down to member. In this case, we're going not quite that far. We're taking this from t or null or undefined, and we're narrowing down to just t. So we're ruling out null or undefined. And then you can see these functions just return Boolean values. So in the case of is not null, we convert this value to true if it's truthy or false if it's falsy. And so that will return true, which means arg is t if the argument is actually t and not null or undefined. In the case of is member, we actually have to do a little bit more work because I've shown kind of the hardest possible type to narrow, which is unknown. So first we have to check that arg is not undefined, and then we have to check that it is an object. If it's an object, we have to check if it has an ID field on the argument. And then if it does have an ID field, is that a number? And as you can see here, that does match our member type. If this function returns true, then we know our argument is a member. So this is one of the ways TypeScript gives us to do safer type assertion. Now, it's obviously not foolproof, right? Because I could replace all of this with true. This is valid TypeScript. And so now any arg that we pass to this, TypeScript will consider to be a member because it always returns true. So you do have to be careful. But basically, what these type assertion functions do is give you a place to do the right thing. Any type of logic that you need to do to validate that this object is a member, you can do that and TypeScript is gonna trust that you do the right thing. So this is not really strongly typed, right? There's nothing in this function body that TypeScript is using to validate what arg is. TypeScript is just gonna look at whatever you return and say, okay, if it's true, then this is a member in our system. And we could actually use member here. We could uh, convert our syntax here back to members.find. And of course that doesn't work. And then we can say is member, we can pass in a member. Maybe we wrap this in an if. And we say, if is member, then we can greet our member. Now, another common form of assertion functions is where if the value given is not of the type you expect, then it could throw an error instead. So often something like that, let me copy is member here, and we can convert this to that style of assertion. So maybe instead of calling this is member, we can call this asserts member. And the main thing we change over here is we say asserts arg is member. Now notice immediately this is a problem because type boolean is not assignable to void. What should happen here is that if arg is a member, this function returns nothing, otherwise it throws an error. The simplest way to do this I think is gonna be to wrap this in an if statement here, is a member, so we'll say do nothing. And I'm just doing this the lazy way so that I don't have to negate that entire um, assertion here, all of this stuff. So we'll just do throw new error here. And now we have this asserts style, which is probably the more common type when you talk about an assertion function. And the way this one works is instead of having an if statement here, what we can do is just say asserts member. And now basically after this point in our code, TypeScript will know that member our variable is member our type. Let's wrap this up by saying, are there any places where you can use the as keyword? Well, like I said at the beginning, I definitely try to avoid it, but sometimes there are cases where it's not possible. If you're working with libraries, for example, that don't have really good type support, maybe you'll need to use as to cast two particular types in order to fully integrate with those libraries. The other common place where I sometimes need to use as is at the edges of your system, where you're processing requests, or maybe you're reading from a database or reading jobs off a queue or something like that. Those edges of your code where you're interacting with the outside world are often where values can be the least defined. If you do need to assert things with as, maybe Make sure you have plenty of good testing and other types around that to validate as much as possible uh, if there's something that you can't do with kind of conventional TypeScript. Also, there are stuff, there are things that still are just kind of hard to do in TypeScript. We talked about object mapping in a video a couple of weeks ago, and that's a case where not using as is really tricky, and you may just not be able to do maybe like a functional style reduce in order to build up an object or something like that. In those cases, as sometimes is the only option. I'm going to leave you with one example 
example of as that I think is 100% useful and something I definitely use all the time, and that is as const. If we have member two here with an ID of two, by default, TypeScript says that our ID field here has a type of number. However, one thing we can do is use as const to essentially narrow or tighten this type as much as possible. And so now if we hover over member two, you can see TypeScript says that this is a read-only ID field with a type of the single value two. Essentially as const here is not so much a type assertion as I think of it as a direction to the TypeScript compiler that when I say ID is two, I literally mean the literal value two only and nothing else. So tighten this as much as you possibly can. But I'm not really telling TypeScript um, what this type should be. I'm just saying narrow it to whatever type you see to be the narrowest. So that's one place you can use as, which is in the as const. All right, this is definitely one that's a little bit more opinion-y than some of my other videos, I think. So I don't know, let me know how you like that. If you know of other places where the as keyword does come in handy, then I would love to hear about those. I, they probably exist. So let me hear about them in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.